Is there anything surprising in one who passes from divine contemplations to the evil state of man, misbehaving himself in a ridiculous manner? If, while his eyes are blinking and before he has become accustomed to the surrounding darkness, he is compelled to fight in courts of law or in other places about the images or the shadows of images of justice, and is endeavoring to meet the conceptions of those who have never yet seen absolute justice. But, whether true or false, my opinion is that in the world of knowledge the idea of good appears last of all, and is seen only with an effort, and when seen is also inferred to be the universal offer of all things beautiful and right, parent of light and of the Lord of light in this visible world, and the immediate source of reason and truth in the intellectual, and that this is the power upon which he who would act rationally either in public or private life must have his eye fixed. When he remembered his old habitation, and the wisdom of the den and his fellow prisoners, do you not suppose that he would felicitate himself on the change and pity them? Neither the uneducated and unformed of the truth, nor yet those who never make an end of their education, will be able ministers of state, not the former, because they have no single aim of duty which is the rule of all their actions, private as well as public, nor the latter, because they will not act at all except upon compulsion fancying that they are already dwelling apart in the islands of the blessed. He will require to grow accustomed to the sight of the upper world, and first he will see the shadows best, next the reflections of men and other objects in the water, and then the objects themselves. Then he will gaze upon the light of the moon and the stars and the spangled heaven, and he will see the sky and the stars by night better than the sun of the light of the sun by day. Look again, and see what will naturally follow if the prisoners are released and disabused of their error. At first, when any of them is liberated and compelled suddenly to stand up and turn his neck round and walk and look towards the light, he will suffer sharp pains, the glare will distress him, and he will be unable to see the realities of which in his former state he had seen the shadows, and then conceive someone saying to him, that what he saw before was an illusion but that now when he is approaching nearer to being and his eye is turned towards more real existence, he has a clearer vision. What will be his reply? Anyone who has common sense will remember that the bewilderments of the eyes are of two kinds and arise from two causes, either from coming out of the light or from going into the light, which is true of the mind's eye, quite as much as of the bodily eye. You must not wonder that those who attain to this beatific vision are unwilling to descend to human affairs, for their souls are ever hastening into the upper world where they desire to dwell, which desire of theirs is very natural, if our allegory may be trusted. The power and capacity of learning exists in the soul already, and that just as the eye was unable to turn from darkness to light without the whole body, so too the instrument of knowledge can only by the movement of the whole soul be turned from the world of becoming into that of being, and learn by degrees to endure the sight of being, and of the brightest and best of being, or in other words, of the good. If I am right, certain professors of education must be wrong when they say that they can put a knowledge into the soul which was not there before, like sight into blind eyes.